This week on Awesome Cast, John Carmen joins us again. We talk about Google Glass and the trouble it's causing, social media and how we use it, and an awesome iPhone demo from back in 2005. All this and more, Awesome Cast. I'm getting awesome. You're getting awesome. We're getting awesome. Yeah, that's what I said now. Hey guys, welcome to the Awesome Cast 140. I'm Sorg here down in the studios in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Down here alone in the studio, because joining me from his humble abode is Chachi. I'm in my back cave! Yes, he Ooh. is. There he is. He's in the comfort of his own home, enjoying his own video games. Not here tonight, but you got a good reason. Yeah, uh, my work schedule's all messed up right now, so. I will be skipping wrestling and going to bed. So, joining us through the beauty of Skype, as most of you ah! usually do. <laughs> and noticing that he's, he can see his own camera. Yes. Ah! Also joining us, join, back again on the show, is John Carmen uh, at Carmen Avenue Online. How are you doing this week, sir? Uh, I'm pretty good. Um, I just found out that I learned something awesome. So can't wait to share that with you. Excellent, <laughs> excellent. And and I want to bring you a new segment of this week. Uh, since you know he's been kind of absent, he's been working a lot, traveling all across the country. I believe he's in he was in Miami, probably New Orleans uh, a couple months ago, uh, a few weeks ago in Miami, I believe. Uh, but but according to Instagram, Rob De La Creta, the other original host of the show, is a uh, touchdown in Phoenix. So there you go. So uh, I'm hoping this is a new a new segment we're going to have. Where's Rob? Since he's not here, and we know he's just cool and doing uh, uh, cool stuff. Uh, where in the country the... <laughs> is Rob De La Creda? <laughs> Maybe take guesses, like, where's Ro- where do you think Rob is this week? <laughs> is he in Phoenix? Is he in Seattle? All is right, he in but New Orleans? Or is he at that, home having a beer? We yeah. can't look. We can't look? Yeah, we can't pay well, attention to anything he sends out. <laughs> I meant I meant with the people, the interactivity people out there. Chachi. Oh, okay, I got you. Uh, of course, this is the awesome cast where we get to geek <coughs> out here, uh, emanating from Pittsburgh, uh, one of the flyover states here. Uh, talking tech every Tuesday at live.sorgatronmedia.com. You can join us in the chat room uh, as we just actually got a little bit of fan interaction here before the show. We're going to begin to in a moment. Um, of course. You can uh, check out all the old episodes and contacts at awesomecast.com. Uh, it takes the awesome, awesome Cast section over at sorgatronmedia.com or drop us an email at contact at awesomecast.com and follow us on Twitter at awesomecast. Um, and you can also check us out. We're on iTunes, Roku, Blip TV, YouTube, and Stitcher in audio and video forms, however you want to digest the awesome. Right, guys? So, right. Let's get right into it. Um, guys, it's the awesome thing of the week. Uh, Chachi, do you want to go first? Wait, hold on. What? I got to grab my remote. Oh, okay, okay. He's going to go do something. I'll, I'll, I'll start with mine. Um, so uh, a, a little while ago, I heard about this app called Field Trip that was apparently a um, – it was apparently like a Google kind of like one of those 10% projects or something like one, one of those kind of side projects they had going on there. This is the Google Play page. It's, it's the first one that came up for me. Uh, but it's finally been released for the uh, iOS, for the iPhone. So I've been playing with it a good bit. At least like I turned it on. And that's and that's where it all kind of ends from there. <laughs> Basically, the idea is... Uh, you get you have this thing running and you're like you know you know driving around town or going somewhere new and what it does is um, it actually uh, pops up a little notification and lets me know like something interesting that's that's near me like points just general points of interest right 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 uh, it, you were trying to use it Sunday I was trying to use it a little bit and, Sunday uh, it it didn't go so well. Well, okay, okay. Well, it, eh, it wasn't that bad. Um, th- it was pretty cool because we were down at the waterfront, and it would it would show up stuff and say, "Hey, here's a, here's a picture of like steel workers from like 1920." You know, uh, in front of like you know, because of course you know, the uh, the waterfront. Uh, uh, those don't know any area over in Homestead. Um, you know, used to be all mills, and now it's like the shopping center. We were doing some filming down there for Unsung uh, on Sunday, so it would pop up that kind of stuff. But even just like my neighborhood, like like I knew about like one of the spots where they shot Dogma, where it used to be a Burger King, 
right up the road on, on Banksville. But it would show me a couple other spots like, hey, this is the bar that they used when they took out uh, uh, Azrael with a golf club. Um, we were driving uh, over by the south side in the one spot where uh, the the detective, you know, figures, figures what's going on with the cement trucks and everything was actually shot down there. Like those little notifications. And it was really cool. Um, I was actually, uh, my, it was, uh, wasn't my week to drive on the carpool going out uh, east of the city. So I got to just sit there and watch the stuff pop up as we you were driving. Weren't, you weren't reading it to everyone in the car, were you? No, 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 no. They're already like, like amazed by my my ways use and everything like that so um okay. no 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 not this week maybe in a couple weeks when i'm like did you know so i can be the <laughs> did you know guy right no don't be that guy i mean like like this like i knew about this like really steep street um um you know just kind of a few blocks away from me but i did not know that is officially uh this uh canton avenue here in beachview is uh it has a gradient of 37 percent and is the steepest incline in the united states Really? I thought really? that was in San Francisco. That apparently is BS, good sir, according to this app. So Maybe your app is wrong. What did Wikipedia say? Did you look it up? I don't know. There's a source. The source is Atlas Obscura. So it's not like through, like, like it's like, you know, it, it, as Google does, it, it, it's taking these other resources. And actually, if I go through here, uh, it has stuff about the Fair Oaks retirement home, like down uh, the other side of the hill. Um, yeah, it just has a list of the door stomp restaurant because it was on, uh, what was that? Uh, uh, diners and dives, that Guy Fury uh, thing. Oh, uh, Will so, loves Guy Fury. Oh, I know he does. I, I don't think he listens to this show. We'll bring it up later. Um, so yeah, I don't know. It was, it was pretty cool. It's, it's what I, it's something I've been hearing about for a while. And, and as much as I drive around like the city and, and I'm going to be going up to New York City or, you know, whatever trips, you know, we end up going on. It's kind of cool to like to have that opportunity to be like, hey, hey this is where they did such and such. Right. Um, so it's field trip. It's on iOS. And of course, it's already been on Android for a good while. Uh, go check it out. It's free. It's a Google thing. Um, and and I'm, I'm having some fun with it. So that is, that's kind of my cool thing of the week. How about you, Chachi? Are you ready? Yes, I am. I got okay. my remote. And uh, I was unprepared for this. Okay. For being in my recliner this evening. Um, so my awesome thing of the week is I, it, it, it's more hilarity than anything, but a, a bar in Seattle has already banned Google Glass. Okay. <laughs> and it's not even out yet. No, it's not out yet, and it's only on uh, beta testing purposes right now. Um, and a different article that I read earlier said that this bar is a self-proclaimed dive bar. And it's in an up-and-coming... Wait, wait, wait. Self-proclaimed dive bar? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and it's located in what's quickly becoming a, a tech sector of Seattle. Okay. So, um, wait, wait. wait. It, a, it, a dive it, bar in the tech sector of Seattle? Yeah. Apparently, the bar has been hip. a while. It's a hip dive um, bar. It's a... Yeah. But uh, apparently, it's right down the street from, I think, a new Amazon office... And other tech companies are slowly moving into the area. Now, here's the thing. Here's the only thing I can figure out. Um, the only reason they could possibly want to ban Google Glass already is because all of these tech people go in there and have affairs. <laughs> It's the only possible I think it's thing a little more than of. that because it's actually been a debate rising on this of okay, so you're walking around with Google Glass and, and as we see in the picture, like well, there's actually a Sergey Brin uh, who's obviously you look. What's he that? looks like a billionaire. Who wouldn't want to wear that? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but there's a camera on it. That's the big issue, right? right. So, so th that's going to be like you're not. You know, the big thing I keep hearing is like you're not going to wear this thing walking into the locker room at the gym. Because uh, that would just be awkward, right? Because they were like, well, who's that guy with the camera on his face in the locker room, you know? In the event that you would find me in a gym to begin with. Yeah, yeah, true. I would wear it in the locker room. <laughs> but, but if you're going someplace, like, like, think about all the places that you can't, like, have a camera in general. Or they give you problems because you have, like, a cell phone camera. Well, you know? it's already been stated that it's going to be built into prescription glasses, that's right. That's right. Well, I mean, so, or as an uh, add-on to prescription glasses or something like that. So, are they gonna like if I go see like if I if I'm dumb enough to uh, uh, get premiere like uh, sneak peek tickets to a movie or something mm -hmm. and wear them? 
Mm-hmm. What are they going to tell me? I have to take off my glasses and I can't watch the movie? Uh, actually, yeah, it's got a camera. They could they could do that. Well, I mean, especially if it's a premiere it, thing. What you have to look at here is my cell phone has a camera. Yep. Oh, they're they're stingy about those too. Well, I know that, but in in general circumstances. Yeah. So what's stopping me from pulling my camera out and snapping pictures? Um, dude, Absolutely nothing. Actually, sometimes they have a metal detector to make sure you're not bringing a camera, uh, cell phone in, like in general. Uh, it depends on who's running them. But but still, but, no, but I, no, I'm done same... talking about the movies now. Okay, I, I'm talking about in general life circumstances. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like if I were to go into this bar. But there's a difference from you pulling a camera out of your pocket and actively like making a motion like you're taking a picture versus I'm just walking around with a cam- camera that's always pointing out what I'm looking at, right? Like the, there, there's, a, I think there's a new kind of etiquette that's going to happen here, um, and, and there's going to be, you know, it will, <laughs> I think one of the things was like was like a lot of the etiquette for Google Glass is going to be uh, uh, solved with fights. Um, and, with fights, with what? With, with fights, like like you have a camera, stop pointing the camera at me. You know, I wouldn't fight with fifteen hundred dollar pair of glasses on. No, 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 no. no. But not I mean, at all. Just the idea will just like upset people that you're like walking around with a camera. You know. Um, well, I'll say this uh, from my experience. I was once using my cell phone as a flashlight in a sex maze, and I was asked to turn that off because I would scare the bears. So. Right, those probably kind, the same thing. Hey, those kind of social issues like that, right? It's it's politeness. Yeah, exactly. I, and I think I think you're going to find situations where you're just there's situations where you're not going to wear them in, like like to a funeral or something, or sex say, mazes, or, or or sex mazes, or or the strip club to say leave your leave your Google Glass at home, you know, or in the car. You know, and 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 ideally, you're not going to get prescription glasses that are. You have one pair of prescription glasses, and it has Google Glass in it, right? Like you're going to have that backup pair for the no Google Glass zones. You know, um, and they'll probably always make them obviously Google Glasses. I mean, we have spy glasses. You know, if you really wanted to spy on something, you get a pair of glasses with a, a hidden camera. You don't wear your Google glasses that everyone recognizes. Well, and that's the thing. Yeah, and something like the Google Glass, people are going to know you're going to have this thing on. Well, right. and uh, Tom in the chat room brings up a good point. Mm-hmm. It, it's got to have some sort of indicating light to to show that it's taking a picture or it's in uh, recording mode. Uh, from what I hear, there is a red light that pops up on it. Uh, right. I actually just heard so, that today. I mean, it's just a matter of people getting used to the fact that this thing exists and people are going to use it. Mm-hmm. And here's as long shot. as it's not fifteen hundred dollars. And, and here's what it looks like when it's on uh, prescription glasses, uh, one of the earlier models of it. And really, I think it's just going to be a model that kind of just clips on your glasses in the long run. Hey, that's fine. Okay. okay. That makes sense. So, so it's not going to be okay. Take your glasses off. It's going to be like, okay, let me stick this thing in my pocket. I honestly right. shouldn't be wearing this in this kind of situation, you know. So you're not like, okay, I got to take my glasses off and I'm blind, you know, going into wherever, you know. It's awkward well, enough. I mean, at the gym. It, granted, it, it's gonna be it's, and people don't realize this, but it's got to be a common sense, mm-hmm. uh, a common sense meter somewhere in society that says. Oh, I'm going into a strip club or a sex maze. I probably shouldn't wear these. <laughs> but the bar wasn't banning it for any common sense or practical reasons. The bar, no, the bar was them banning it because they're a bunch of jackasses. Yeah. <laughs> but there's that idea of like, well, people are going to come here and they're going to be, you know, what, you know, yeah, the dive bar. What do you do at a dive bar? You're hooking up, you're getting drunk, right? Like, you right. don't want, you know, cameras so much involved. You know, that, you know, I can look over and see that, uh, you know, Amazon CEO, you know, drinking his woes away because he just had to lay off 500 people. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I, I, I don't know, I'm just kind of creating a situation. I, I, but, uh, but you know, news. that kind of idea. Amazon just laid off 500 people. <laughs> <laughs> did, they, did they seriously? No, you just said it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but no, yeah, like they're saying, they're also saying in the chat room, there's got to be, there's also a voice command says, you know, like, 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 OK Glass. Usually starts it from from the sounds of things, and I'll take a picture or, or something like that. Um, so I I, I think there's and there's some pretty good comics of like this is gonna ha- what's gonna happen. You've, you're gonna be the first one to Google Glass, and everybody's gonna be like, oh cool, that that's really awesome. To okay, that's kind of normal. To okay, nobody wants to hang out with you anymore because you might be taking pictures of them. 
Like, like the camera has been the issue here. You know, as a, and, and yeah. the other the other thoughts going into this is this whole idea of you know we have problems enough with people like you know having you know lunches and stuff like that and they're playing with their their cell phone now they you don't even know if they're paying attention to you or watching that thing. Uh, on well, I see. I think that's the bigger point for the bar. I don't think the camera is the bigger issue. I okay. think their point is they don't want people paying attention to what's going on uh, in the digital realm when they're supposed to be at a bar with their friends or hooking up or. Or it, could poker be, machine. or it could be like the no cell phone policy just because I'm annoyed that you're talking on the phone being belligerent exactly. and not paying attention to this transaction that should be taking place. You know? I think you're right. I think it's more about social etiquette for okay. this bar. I think they're just sick of – I mean they mentioned fanny packs. Maybe they've been sick of accessories going back a while now, <laughs> but they are – they're fed up with it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So uh, what about you, John? What do you, what's your uh, awesome thing of the week? Well, it's not new. It's not new to me, but um, I'm wearing this hat, this MailChimp hat. So I think uh, I was going to talk about the hat, but I should talk about the reason I have the hat is because I contacted MailChimp uh, for a class I'm doing uh, on auto, uh, semi-automating your social media. And one of the coolest plugins and coolest ways I found recently to semi-automate social media is the MailChimp social plugin for WordPress. Okay. So this is really only useful if you're geeky enough to build your own WordPress site. But the, uh, the social plugin allows you to post and then uh, repost that same post to Facebook and to Twitter. But there are many plugins that will do this. There are many plugins that will automate it. One, one thing that I love about the MailChimp plugin is that before, once you hit publish, before you actually publish to Facebook and Twitter, it gives you the option to edit. And there are different rules when you're posting to Facebook, different rules when you're posting to Twitter. Obviously, Twitter, you have 140 characters, like this episode, number 140. And you have, uh, you know, hashtags and at signs, and those don't work on Facebook. So you have the opportunity to customize for one network differently than another, which I love. I hate seeing hashtags and at signs on Facebook that don't do anything. And I hate seeing text that's cut off on Twitter because someone didn't get the chance to customize what they wanted to say before their post was retweeted onto Twitter. So my whole point is you should automate as much as possible, but I'm a big proponent of semi-automation where the user gets to customize their message. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah, and this is actually something that came across myself uh, earlier this afternoon and, and kind of tagged it to be like, okay, you know, as a MailChimp user, uh, I, you know, I, I use it for the Tokatron Media newsletter and, and some other passwords. Um, and I, was, I wanted to see what they're doing. And then, then I got your, your feedback. I'm, I'm definitely going to check into this. So Yeah, I would look into it. I mean, if you're already a MailChimp user, then there's no reason to not use this. It's so so simple to set up. Uh, you can you can set it to go to your Facebook profile or Facebook page. Mm-hmm. It's completely customizable. And like I said, uh, every time you post, you get the option to customize your message to any of these networks, or you can choose not to if you mm-hmm. if you don't want to post a specific post to Twitter or Facebook. And it looks like it has a lot of hooks for like uh, stats and everything too. That's a little more extensive because any of the, any of the Twitter stuff, like the auto post things, like they would break half the time or it use this just garbled up like. Boom, boom, boom. I, I, you know, nobody knows it's a blog. It's just like, here's a title. There are a lot. Right. You can customize. Um, you can set a default, but then you can customize the default. Like sometimes I'll just tweet out the t- title and the link. But yeah. Sometimes I want to give a little more info. You can always customize that. Um, and because it's MailChimp, you know it'll be around for a while. Yeah. This isn't, you know, many plugins are created by you know, ind- independent developers and they get busy or they take a new job and they disappear. Yeah. And God bless all these independent developers that have been building plugins for WordPress over the years. But sometimes you want a plugin that's going to last that you you want to be committed to and will commit to you. And MailChimp's not going anywhere. <laughs> Alexander Carr says, you had my curiosity, Carbon, but now you have my attention. Apparently, he's a word cu- WordPress nut out there. Yeah, yeah, so. well, probably about the hat, which, by the way, is incredibly hot. Uh, <laughs> I'm sweating <laughs> under this hat, but uh, I'm committed to it. Uh, and, I, and I will be giving away the hat, actually, at a class I'm teaching. It's called Semi-Automating Social Media or Semi-Automatic Social Media. Wednesday, April 3rd, I'm teaching class, and uh, we're giving away this hat. Now that I've sweated in it. 
Nice, nice. So you give him a little something extra. I like that. It's very I personal. Like and we have competition going on right now. Uh, I oh, can't no. see. The, I can't see the top of the hat there. It just looks like oh, there he is. It's a Cookie Monster hat. Yeah, I was gonna say, is that Cookie Monster? Mm -hmm. So you just sure eat is. cookies in that hat. That's awesome. That's a that's a homemade one. It is. Yeah. Courtesy of uh, Missy's mom. There you go. Are you serious? Nice. Yeah. Classic. Yeah, it was awesome. She, uh, they, they, they actually uh, had. It, there was a. Well, I got my Kermit one. You probably see me in pictures with down mm -hmm. here. And uh, there was a Missy got a got a, uh, a Cookie Monster one, and then she went and made one. I think one of those, and I think she also made a Kermit one. So just like inspiration, boom. It nice. was over like the Christmas Good. break. Was, she's oh, she's great with that stuff. She's got a pretty cool Etsy page. I really need to share out more. Um, she does a lot of cool stuff. So. Anyways, yeah, go check that out, uh, especially if you're using WordPress and just Mailchimp in general. I, I, I'm a big fan of it. Uh, I, I like it a lot better than um, like like one of my clients has a constant contact, and I'm just I'm just completely I <laughs> get into it with the with the tech support team on Twitter with those guys. Um, so, um, all right, we actually have some uh, fan submitted uh, uh, awesome things of the week. We we had come in right before the show, so bear with me. Uh, not having other than what they've sent me information wise. First of all, Alexander Cars, our friend from Long Beach, California, uh, sends us an email. Uh, his awesome thing of the week is the Adobe Creative Cloud. Uh, it's a monthly subscription with a ton of features, but my awesome thing of the week is the fact that they've announced that education pricing, pricing for students, teachers, faculty, and you can even sign up for introductory price of about $20 a month uh, for the first year before it goes to $30 a month. The features uh, the student and teacher plan has is equivalent to the $40 a month individual complete plan, so it's a pretty uh, good deal all told. Educational team... Uh, plans are $40 a month, still cheaper than the $70 a month for the regular team plans. So th that's pretty cool. And actually, since I'm kind of in the educator space, I'm well, they're definitely going to be putting that to the students. Cause we've we've well, had conversations. My question to you, Sargus, do you need to be a full-time educator to get that? I, I'm pretty sure you do. So I probably don't qualify that. But I'm always looking for ways for these kids to be able to like do their work outside of class. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, like, like it's hard to convey that. Like we, We've had a lot of... Josh, stop! Josh, your seat's loud. I have to mute you. Um, I, yeah, but but still, like like these kids, like they think that they have to be here in class and in labs, and you know, depending on their schedule, maybe they can't get into it uh, when the lab is available. Uh, yeah, you and know. students can afford Adobe products traditionally by yeah, purchasing the product. Exactly. I, I, how did you know when we went to school? How did we get it? We you know, let's be honest, we cracked it, right? I don't want to say it. <laughs> Uh, most, but most students are cracking, but now it's kind of, I had heard it, about that. Yeah, I, 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 the speculations are cracking happens a lot, but, but when you have Photoshop, that's like 600 bucks, you know, you're, you're, you're going to have that, right? Just for Photoshop, right? Just for Photoshop. But if you're able to drop, like, you know, kids can drop like $20 a month on something like this. That's completely reasonable. I'm pretty oh, yeah. excited about that. Oh yeah. Uh, it, 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 it's something you can you can get with that McDonald's job, you know, or that or that <laughs> uh, you know student student work program job, right? right. Uh, it, that's fantastic, you know. And even like I was excited when we first we start, first started talking about Creative Cloud stuff for you know probably about a year or two ago on this program, where it was like it was like hey all the freelancers like I don't need Photoshop all the time. As it is, I'm sitting on an old copy of CS4 because I really don't need that much Photoshop, right? That's yeah. enough for me. But the idea of okay, randomly and somebody wants me to do a little bit of flash well i'm not going to drop 500 bucks i don't know what it is really but it's, it's up there right it's three figures at least the Maybe. issue is uh, not much changes i mean uh, you could probably use cs1 and be fine now you know i don't know how far back you could go but not yeah, that yeah. much changes in, in major functionality no. maybe in workflow but you you're fine what would you say cs4 you're fine yeah yeah well you know to be honest you know other than you know some low-end technical stuff i'm teaching flash this quarter and uh, I, I, I honestly, I've definitely not touched it since CS started. Uh, probably haven't touched it since what Flash Five or something back when right. the media had it. And there's not much that's different, dude. Like, there's a couple really cool uh, updates to the way they did some of the animations. I dig, uh, but uh, other than that, uh, it, it's not much difference. You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Tom saying he was researching Adobe Premiere. It was sixteen hundred dollars for one copy. That doesn't seem right. That seems a little high. 
Uh, he says, I guess uh, Microsoft <laughs> Movie Maker is in my future. Actually, Tom, let's have a discussion uh, off show uh, about some alternatives there. I, I might have some good ones for you. Um, but, but yeah, even for something like Premiere or something like that, and we actually we talked about how uh, they had kind of released CS2 for a free download. Really? Yeah, it would, but, it, but CS2. Though. I mean, okay. I said you can use it, but I don't know. I mean, it's going to be well. Ancient. Well, if you Here's have a problem, if, if you use any of the newer software, going backwards is it going to be tough for you. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's if it. you're in school and you're using newer software in the computer cluster, and then you buy, you get CS2 for free. It might not be worth it. Yeah, yeah, and actually, there's a problem if you have like the last two versions. Uh, of of Mac OS that doesn't support all the way back to a uh, uh, Power PC. I didn't know that, but yeah, yeah, it makes then, sense. Then, then you're not even trying these things. You have to have Rosetta still, and they they cut that out a couple versions ago. So oh, wow, and you might have problems getting it on like Windows 8 or something like that. But other than that, it's really cool. And, and, and then there's debate on whether they actually let it out for free or just like here have this and you ha- you should really have a serial code, but it'll work without it because there was a server. Right, thing. right. But other than that, you know, it's, it's cool that they kind of have an access for something like this. Uh, oh, but CS6 has pretty has a prettier interface with its darker colors. Yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, uh, Premiere had to win a bundle, uh, Tom. Um, yeah, because I, I feel like Premiere is maybe about maybe 700 by itself, or probably lesser. Uh, but still, I, I would look at the Creative Cloud for a lot Can of Can someone stuff. Google this? I, I have enough computers in front of me. Um, this is a car. Hello? Is, Hi. Uh, seriously, I, is Chachi breaking into cars? <laughs> Chachi, what are you doing? What? What's going on? Oh, what what have you been doing while we've been talking? You've been committing crimes. <laughs> no, that was a uh, car alarm in my neighborhood. It happens quite a lot. Okay, okay. But uh, thanks, Alex Cars, for that. Go check it out. Uh, w Creative Cloud. Uh, it, it's nice that they've kind of lowered the barrier to to getting getting. Uh, you know, into stuff like that. Uh, Mr. Garza in the chat room dropped us this at the beginning of the show. Uh, so uh, I've scanned it real quick, but uh, this, this is one. It looks like they're opening uh, Google Indoor Maps. And yeah, we got a little video here for you guys. Um, and uh, according, to this, according to this article, I think it's mostly uh, this launching in Australia. But I think we've had this here for a little bit in America. Is that, is that seem familiar to you guys? Like, I think they were launching it for, like, like it's mostly, like, malls and airports. Uh, Wait, did you say Google Maps? Google Indoor Maps. Ah, Indoor Maps, okay. Because so, I've had Google Maps for years. I didn't want to tell you guys. <laughs> and I've seen, I've heard about them doing, like, street views of, of indoor locations. Like, I know, like, the Twitch studios, like, you can, like, go uh, pay a service for a guy to come in that's actually, like, a contractor of Google or something like that. And they'll take, like, the 360 uh, right. uh, photos of, of, of your, your, your business or whatnot. So. I've seen that in even delis down the street from me in Little Italy, and I don't think they paid for it. I just assumed really? Google came in and, and did that with their permission. Might be some some submission process or something like that. Might be. Or maybe something where someplace significant enough, they'll go do it. But if right, you're like, I want to be part of it, but you haven't deemed me significant enough or in a, you know, the one the, the studio I'm thinking about, they're actually like in Pataluma, which is like kind of just an offshoot suburb of uh of, of san francisco you know right. or something like that um, i'm gonna submit the sex maze so we'll see what happens all right all right Let's see how that application goes so go check that out um it's uh yeah, we'll have the recently what's that i want to i want to say this is on it's not indoors but i just a couple days ago i noticed uh that there's google maps inside amusement parks like inside cedar point you can go and it'll point out specific rides although it's not updated at cedar point to include the new ride but um, and I wondered about that, if Cedar Point had to request or pay someone to come in and do that, or if they contacted Cedar Point and said, hey, we want to add your park's interior to our map. It's not indoors, but it's a private interior area. I feel like it could go either way. Because, um, cause, I mean, something like, like Google, they want to go to those big popular places and say, hey, look what you can do. You know, right. uh, to get people used to the idea, right? Um, and then, and then, like I said, I think it's like a level of importance. Like, like you know, Google themselves, they can get to so many places themselves and say, yeah, we definitely want to go do Mall America. We definitely want to go, you know, do Disney World or something like that, right? But and if people are checking in, mm-hmm. I mean, they can go by popularity based on check-ins. Exactly, exactly. If they're using all those services, you know, people hey. check in at every ride at amusement parks. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Awesome. 
So thank you. Uh, uh, if you guys want to uh, submit a uh, awesome thing of the week you want us to share here, uh, you know, feel free. Drop a line again at awesomecast or uh, contact at awesomecast.com, uh, and we'll definitely uh, roll those in. Or even uh, submit it over on our Facebook or our Google Plus page. Uh, I'm double checking, make sure nothing slipped in over there here during the show. Uh, and we definitely use them. I, I, we like, and we also uh, p- post a lot of our stories we are considering for the w- week in there. So if you have any commentary on that, we've had some good discussions pre-show, bringing up some good topics um and and we like to use that we like all the input we can get from you guys so yeah here's an update from cars uh it says 1900 for production premium uh premiere by itself is 800 (laughs) whoever told you 1600 is a liar and presumably a whore but it's okay um well whores will inflate the price there you go um all right so let's get to the stories here we had lined up let's get rid of that google glass uh um We'll skip that one. So Facebook newsfeed. I know, uh, John, you, you deal a bit with social media as well here. Um, have you been looking into the new newsfeed? First, I've heard of it. The first, you've heard of it. So the new news. What's a what's a newsfeed? It's, a, it's <clears throat> the the first thing you see when you log in the Facebook. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Well, what have they what have they changed the timeline? What? You're talking about a change to timeline? No, no, no. For the actual news feed, the actual like uh, uh, the, the feed of everything going on that happens when you first log in. Your your personal news feed. Yeah, your personal of news. Your feed. friends, right? Yeah. And your likes. Yeah. Um, no, I, I honestly I've been buried in design work lately. Uh, I really don't know much about this or anything. Well, basically, what they've done is uh, they announced at an event last Thursday that they're going to be redesigning the news feed, um, make it a little more image prominent apparently kind of like what we're seeing already with google plus and what twitter likes to do if you attach an image even um, pinterest recently had an update uh a subtle update but they're making their pins even bigger so i didn't hear about pinterest that. which was an image based social network has made their images bigger so everyone's just going with bigger images i suppose it's you know, with higher resolutions and larger screens mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. although people are still on small screens but we're going uh, very image heavy everywhere. So I think this this is pretty interesting. Like here's an example here. I'll we'll pop this up here a little larger. <clears throat> so like here's an image. Uh, you know, if I posted like this story, right? And and here's an image it draws from there. You know, just like it does now with Facebook, right? Like if I if I post something in my timeline, but now like they're actually putting the text kind of like over top of the image to a pretty oh, yeah, cool that's, effect. That's weird. I mean. Uh, it's very similar to what Twitter did, actually, with their profile images, where you can choose a header, and then it puts your text on top of the header, and it adds a gradient. Um, some images still work better than others, but it adds a dark gradient so that their light white text uh, can appear and be readable over any image that you post. Mm-hmm. But I just think, you know, trying to automate what is basically design, graphic design, um, just has very, very variable results. Yeah, and I kind of see that a lot with uh, the Google Plus ification uh, 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 happening here. Uh, like Google Plus itself, like it, it was really nice when they first you know started having big images and stuff on on the iOS uh, apps in particular, right? But it seems more and more like it's kind of making up for stuff it doesn't. It, 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 you know, like even if you you look on Google Plus, like the stuff that really pops out is, is the stuff with big images, right? Right. You know, like you know, like here, this modern combat, and then we got like a little one for a story that we posted. Then we got Michelle Obama just kind of slapping us in the face, you know, or or or, or whatever. Um, With her big muscular arms. Yeah, exactly. Um, um, but 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 if you go, to, I go to the like the uh, the iPhone app. Like some of those things, like they kind of are like I have a weird doubling of the photo. It's not really working out as well anymore. Uh, as they try to make these do different things. Uh, it's really everybody's moving to, towards a more visual web, right? Uh, the big design word of the day is, is large images. You know, uh, if you're if you're uh, posting a Google Plus, any of the, the the tip givers out there say, make sure you have images, make sure you have uh, uh, you know you know nice looking images, big images that right. pop up, so people will gravitate towards their, your post because they're more visual. They'll pop out at them, right? 
But that's natural. I mean, that's just human nature. Mm -hmm. Uh, We've always been visual people. I think men especially tend to be more visual. But uh, even women, I mean, Pinterest is dominated by women and it's a a visual uh, medium. So I think they're just tapping into what we do naturally anyway. They're just seeing the statistics that visual posts posed with images tend to get more views, more likes. Uh, my concern is is that they're dumbing it down too much to the point where it doesn't really matter what your message is as long as you have a picture that draws attention. Yeah, yeah, and that's the concern. But hopefully it's complimentary, you know, in the long I hope we could find a happy medium, yes. Yeah, yeah. The right. issue of putting the text on top of the image is almost subjugating the text to the image. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not thrilled about that. Mm-hmm. It, it kind of uh, it, it kind of destroys all the work you've done, right? <laughs> it doesn't destroy. I mean, there's a lot of skill and and talent to design and point. You know, really, you can almost boil graphic design down to putting text on top of images, right? Mm-hmm. And you have designers going to four year schools for degrees and putting text on top of images, and robots just never going to get it right a large percentage of the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, kind of alongside this, I, I presume this was at the presentation they were talking about this, but Facebook wants to be the social network of record. Oop, oh, there it is, Over the, uh, according to The Verge. Um, it is. It is the social network. There's a movie called The Social Network. <laughs> that's that's kind of like, that's kind of established it, right? Like nobody else. Exactly. Is. Yeah, yeah. Hey, they're going to be called something, something else by that time. Um Sorry, I was reading the. Uh, yes, there's an awesome cast doc that I didn't share with you, Bobby. I'll, I'll work on that. Um, but yeah, it, it's it, it is it is because nothing's bigger. Even as much as Google Plus gets their hooks into our search, like I talked about the authorship thing uh, last week here in the show, uh, it, it, and, and you know it, it's doing fine with this, you know, with what it does. But it's still a far cry from becoming like the place where I'm going to connect with people, like something like Facebook is, at least in that way. You know, it's definitely no competition. Twitter does something differently. I, I, I just think Twitter is just a different animal than looking at a Facebook or a Google Plus or a MySpace, right? It's most difficult to differentiate between Twitter and Facebook because while uh, technically they're very different, mm-hmm. the audiences and the usage is often the same, whereas it's so much easier to differentiate between LinkedIn and Facebook, LinkedIn and Twitter, LinkedIn and Google+. Plus. You can say, well, LinkedIn is, is professional. It's my business social network. It's my, my live resume. Uh, and Google+, Plus, it, it, the difference with Google+, Plus is that you can really separate your social circle. So it's different for each person. So for some people, it might be more social. For some people, it might be more business. And if, for many people, it's both social and business, depending on which circle you're posting to and communicating with. Um, but Twitter or Facebook are hard to differentiate. It really, I think, comes down to preference mm-hmm. and how you communicate with different groups. Yeah, yeah, it, it does. It does. Um, and, and, and I'm seeing that. And you see that with audience, too, though, right? Like, it's really is like where the audience is. Like, we always say, like, Google Plus is the photographers and the tech heads, right? Facebook is where your family and the general population is. Twitter Absolutely. is a different, like, people... I want, I want to say short attention spanners, but that's where most of us end up, end up living, right? Especially between the three of us here in this in this uh, on this panel, right? Well, um, one thing you know about the short attention span, I've heard over and over again that that Twitter has actually made people, and I've heard this from writers, that Twitter has made them better writers because it's it's made them edit mm-hmm. and edit and edit down to one hundred and forty characters, mm-hmm. and um, I really appreciate that because I, I don't like to think that. I'm really just writing things for people with short attention spans or I'm not writing quality because I'm, I'm not writing quantity. Mm-hmm. The fact is I might be writing better quality and it may, may have made me a better writer now that I'm a professional writer mm-hmm. for some reason. See, I feel like too, though, that Twitter is the thing for people that I always I always refer to Twitter as my kind of uh, my, my mind leak. Right. Like this is where my thoughts go. Right. And I can spit them out there. And and it was really cool. Uh, a few weeks ago, a, a few of us, while we were doing our Monday Night Raw Hangouts, we all downloaded, we all found out that we had our, our Twitter backups available. So we all downloaded them and started reading back. Like me, I was reading back to like, what, 2007, 2008. Wow, right? nice. And just like saying, like, like reading the stuff I was saying, you know, and be able to like go through and be like, you know, wow, I really hated my job. Or, wow, I remember <laughs> when that happened, right? Like now, like the thoughts I was having are now, you know, on record. You know, you talk mm-hmm. about social network of record. Now I can go back and look at, like, 
what what was on my mind back in 2008 you know what was right. i going through back in 2008 at least you know that i was presenting publicly or maybe inappropriately uh sharing publicly because i didn't understand the whole social media concept yet you know um and but is there is there an inherent difference between how you do that on twitter and how you communicate on facebook is that inherent to the medium or is it just a preference the one thing you said that our families are on Facebook, I think that makes a difference. Mm-hmm. My family's on Facebook. My mom is finally on Facebook. My dad's been on there for a little while, but they're not on Twitter. Yes. My cousins aren't on Twitter, at least as far as I know. Mm-hmm. Right. So I think that maybe that is inherent, that less techie people that we have relationships with tend to be on Facebook, whereas Twitter tends to be more techie and, and, and my clients and maybe business connections are also on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is that just me, or do you have the same experience? Uh, it depends, because uh, I really, if I didn't have that, really, Twitter's my entrance way to everything. If I didn't have Twitter to leak my stuff out to and be able to connect that with Facebook, nobody would get that stuff. But do you connect? Do you connect your Twitter to Facebook? Do you autom- automate yeah, posting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's set up so like at replies and stuff don't go through. But generally, okay. if I tweet, and it was actually at a point, and it broke, I have to try to refix it. I was uh, to a point where if it was something of a little more substance, I would post it to Google Plus because I wanted mm-hmm. to try to get some activity up there and see what I could do with it, and then that would generate a tweet. That would then be generated into a Facebook. So I would wow, have bread, okay. uh, breadcrumbs going all the way back to Google Plus for a while there. Uh, but then it started like tweeting everything that I made in five minutes every 20 minutes. And I had to <laughs> fix the, the whatever service was connecting that. So I am going to go back and see if I can redo that. Because otherwise okay. I've just been saying, okay, uh, I'm going to tweet this thing that's a more broader story. But I'm also going to put it over here on Google Plus because I have, you know, the tabs in my browser and everything to, you know, just right. click that and I'll, I'll plus the page and leave a comment, right? Um, so, I mean, it, it's not, but again, I'll lean to just doing Twitter because I think the biggest thing is accessibility. I pick up this phone and I text message and boom, you know, right. I, I think that's what most, I, I think that's what's more than the community. I think that, because I feel like there's different communities, not just tech people, but I think it's just people that just want to communicate without any strings attached. Right. Well, and you think that's you're referring to Google Plus now? Oh no, the Twitter, Twitter, back to Twitter. Twitter. Okay. So, I think I feel freer to communicate on Twitter, despite the fact that I have more followers on Twitter than I have friends on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Um, and I could be alienated. I mean, I say ridiculous shit on Twitter, and um, I curse there on purpose because I curse on Twitter, but I don't really curse on Facebook unless I'm really mad. Because, I, you know, I don't want my mom seeing that. But um, I don't know who's seeing it on Twitter. But I think in Twitter there's almost this acceptance of uh, forgiveness or, or it's not anonymity because everyone knows who you are. But uh, I feel – I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with this. I, I Maybe it's just <laughs> me, but I feel, I feel like I can be freer uh, to say whatever the heck I want on Twitter – Whereas on Facebook, I'm a little more real. And that's weird because it, that, that seems backwards to me because I feel like Twitter is the more public of the two. You know, yeah, from the chat yeah, room. Yeah, it is. Just like, some other ideas here from the chat room. Uh, Brother Sorg, Matty saying uh, he's uh, Hootsuite to post to both. I use Hootsuite as well to try to kind of like whenever I'm doing split posts to like all the awesome cast stuff or all the Mayhem show stuff. Um some of that automation you're talking about, right? Or scheduling stuff. It's really good well, for I use Hootsuite to post to both often, although mm-hmm. yeah, there's evidence that it might be better to post directly to Facebook. Yeah, yeah. yeah th- there's that. Cause it, it, supposedly it might be, you know, it might downrank you for doing that. Exactly. I guess. Which then it's like, well, great. So now I have to manually do all this crap again, right? Right. So what's the point of having an automation tool? Exactly. Exactly. Um, but he says he uses uh, Hootsuite to post to both. He likes uh, how it does uh, links on Facebook. Plus, I can regulate uh, what goes where. I treat Twitter as public while Facebook is my family and friends. Okay. Uh, well, yeah. And you know what? That's actually what I'm doing. It's just that I guess I'm the opposite of most people in the sense that I'm a little more uh, um, raunchy more- in public than I am with my family and friends. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's like you're, you're public. Pre- so so the normal people that comes across you, you're this personality, but your family and friends, you're the nicer personality. It, it's just you're, you're, you're hiding your well, yeah, I'm just I'm just a little more polite around yeah, family and yeah, friends. I'm still yeah. the same person, but I'm willing to curse and – you know, vent my frustration more on Twitter 
because but mostly I try to be funny, you yeah. know, when I'm venting my frustration. Not all the time, but I try to turn a bad situation to something funny. Mm-hmm. Whereas I don't necessarily want to burden my family and friends who will take it a little too seriously and start asking me, oh, what's going on? Can we help? You know, I just want people on Twitter to just laugh. Mm-hmm. Um, Tom in the chat room <laughs> says Twitter. Well, I, oh, go ahead, Josh. I, I know where he's coming from with that because uh, <laughs> apparently I'm the exact same way. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I completely lost it today. Um, yeah, I saw some of that. Uh, <laughs> we're installing new carpet at work, which is why my schedule is so messed up. And uh, I, uh, I'm i responsible for removing and resetting up the computers. And both days that we've been doing this so far, and this is going to go on for the entire month, is... I've gotten calls where these people are relating their computer issues to the fact that the carpet was installed. And I wish I were kidding. I believe you. I believe you. And it, it just it, – it's getting to me because I, I didn't believe that these people that handle these multi-million really? dollar transactions are that dumb. <laughs> Maybe it's static electricity. Maybe – you fried their computer with static electricity from the carpet. If, if it were, if it were, I can't make like any that. other connection. Right, exactly. And I, if it were that, I would be okay with that more so. However, it's stuff like uh, my pass. Uh, we got new carpet yesterday, and now my password doesn't work. <laughs> or, or we got new carpet yesterday, and I'm not getting emails. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> did, did you tweet us? I did, and today oh, we, uh, I got the Outlook one today. All right, and it was a rough day, and I just, I just lost it on Twitter. And uh, uh, Ginny, uh, uh, <laughs> she's like, I can't even picture you angry, <laughs> because I, I'm normally not on Twitter. Uh, Twitter, like you, I, I try to turn my anger into humor. Exactly. Make some because no one's gonna really identify with your anger because everyone has their own issues that they're dealing with. I mean, unless it's something really egregious, right? Right. Um, But if it's just something like you know, I don't know, like the customer service related, people are just going to dismiss it and deal with their own problems. So make it something funny, and you know, you turn a frown upside down and you bring other people onto your side as well. Right. And I and it, like Sorg, I've been going back through occasionally and reading uh, tweets from when I joined Twitter in 2007. And I, I've noticed that in the beginning, I wasn't sure what to do with Twitter, mm-hmm. like much of us. And instead, like over time, it's just become that place where I can be completely ridiculous mm-hmm. and everyone likes right. it. Yeah. And, and Facebook is that place where I put stuff that I need friends or family to see or I want friends mm-hmm. and family to see. I, it, because if you're, if you're totally ridiculous on Facebook, you'll have people who are close to you in real life concerned about you. Right. You know, and not necessarily knowing how to take it. Whereas if you're ridiculous on Twitter, it's just because it's so public, people figure, oh, well, he's just – being ridiculous just to prove a point or be funny. So, so uh, Twitter's more like our soapbox, more like, you know, we're getting up and performing than than really, or, or commenting or, 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 you know, all cheering along with a Steelers game or a Pens game or something, right? Right. Like, as it's, opposed to, because it, 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 it is that instantaneous thing. It, it Like I always say, like Twitter right. is like, you're in this giant crowded room and you're shouting something out. And if somebody <laughs> hears you, they can shout back. Right. Like that, that's, that's, that's why I lay it out in the one-on-one uh, courses usually. Right. Well, uh, sort you of all people know that it's my ridiculousness on Twitter that's led me to opportunities in life. Exactly, exactly. Because because uh, you you've you've attracted these people, and then uh, you know, it, and that that's brought up stuff like this. I mean, you for instance, when when I said, "Hey, can we put you know Chachi up as host for this for Unsung?" They knew you from Twitter uh, or whatever else, you know, presumably, and they're like, "Yeah, great. We love his personality." You know, exactly. So I mean. It, it, I don't want to say that I'm a different person on Twitter. Mm-hmm. I, I just say I, that there's 
less boundaries mm -hmm. on Twitter. Or even things like, you know, uh, friends of ours have been kind of using Twitter as as a, a, a platform for some of their uh, comedy writing they've been trying to get into, you right. know, and putting stuff out there. Um, well, I, Twitter I, has become huge with comedians. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, for us, the old-time social media pirates to sit back and look at what's happened in the world of comedy with podcasting. I mean, comedians have brought back podcasting and mm -hmm. uh, same thing with Twitter. I mean, you the most of the, some of the most popular people in podcasting and Twitter are comedians now. Exactly, exactly. And it's it's kind of uplifting, you know. At the same time, I look at it and think, "Well, I've been doing that for a while, but I was never really trying to be funny," you know. But it's different <laughs> for a comedian. If that's your profession, you're always trying to be funny. It's come a long way from what kind of sandwich did you have today? Are you really asking me? No, no, no. That's, that's what. That's like what it would ask when you first launched it, right? That's what everyone always assumed. Oh, I don't want to join Twitter because I don't care what you had for breakfast. I don't want to do what I had for breakfast. Well, I don't know why that's a big thing. Cats and breakfasts, right? People hate cats and breakfasts as if that's all we ever talk about. Hey, hey, and according to the, the chat room, cats are do make up 99% of the internet. Uh, somehow 1% is porn and 0.5% is podcasting. I don't know how, I don't know, they had math in there. It doesn't all add up. Um, but still. Well, uh, other than that, uh, and also the, it was come up, when does, where does uh, Friendster fit into all this? Friendster? Friendster's the first social network that I joined. How about you guys? I was, I was post-Friendster. I didn't know about Friendster. I was a MySpacer, and, uh, then, then even that, I only learned it because, like, I, 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 I got hired and like, did you check out this MySpace thing? We're all on it. You know, I was like, right. okay, sure, right? And then, you know, here we are. Yeah, I got on MySpace I, for podcasting to promote the show because everyone who had a podcast was on MySpace. Oh. And since we did interviews with musical artists, every mm -hmm. musical artist, of course, was on MySpace. So that was our big way to, to meet musical artists and get them on the show. But I joined Friendster because my old roommate from college requested that I join. And I was like, <laughs> what is this? And he's like, that's the best way to reach me. So my first social media profile was something like, uh, I'm just here to talk to Pete. Because that's literally why I joined Friendster, and and, and I remember those days. Because I mean, MySpace, when we had when we had our, our rap groups and everything, that or we were doing our interviews again, like you getting artists and everything. That's how we yeah. communicate. Now, guess what? Music and professional wrestling, I, it's all being booked on Facebook, dude. All of it. Really? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it, not it's, Google Plus, but it's even better. No, not Google Plus. <laughs> <laughs> but what's even better because then we can do these group messages with everybody you know you know uh, that's involved and 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 it's better organized right right um at least two you know two two promoters i can think of that's how they get everybody together say hey this is the day for the next show we're doing this and this make sure you get your promos in by this time da 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 da, da. and everybody responds and sometimes they have some fun with it you know i mean it, there was really cool you know uh camaraderie and i uh among those kinds of groups and i think this is kind Kind of uh, helping that uh, for the same reason mm -hmm. because everyone was on MySpace and now everyone's on Facebook. So it, now, why would you try to use Twitter or Google Plus? I mean, still not everyone's on Twitter, but everyone is on Facebook. It's almost the law. Facebook's Facebook's the uh, the, the medium. Yeah, exactly. Um, a couple of real quick things I want to get to. Uh, we can spend a couple minutes. Uh, first of all, this is this is just kind of cool geek. Uh, gadget stuff that kind of popped up. Former Apple employee reveals a 2005 iPhone dev kit complete with an 8.6 inch screen and serial port. Look at this thing. Uh, this is actually posted over by uh, Ars Technica, reposted here on uh, The Verge. Um, that's So this is 2005. The first iPhone came out, what, 2007? I believe. Uh, so this is full two years in advance. So and they said in here, it's, it was probably mostly for testing, uh, developing the iOS uh, user interface. Uh, there's actually a comment on here. Uh, where is it at? Uh, the, 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 the former Apple employee told ours that at, at the time it was really impressive seeing the basically a version of OS X running on this thing. So well, it, was that thing taped sense. together? Uh, it looked like it was taped together. It, it, it might actually be taped together, but I mean, it's like one of those prototype sort of deals, right? And you can see on there, there's actually an Ethernet port underneath. It looks like uh, uh, the other end of, you know, actually both ends of USBs on here. Uh, wow. And, of course, a serial port. Uh, but, you know, that's for them to load stuff up there because they really didn't have, you know, an interface 
figure it out or you know the cord or, or any of that kind of stuff at this point so that's just a, a general thing for them to to load stuff on with um i, I think it's really cool getting seen like an early early working model uh, uh like this to kind of see where it came from i mean you got well, things i mean like the article says it was merely a, a tool for them to test the os yeah uh, so I mean, the size of it doesn't really matter. No, no, um, no, no, no. If anything, that just helps them. Oh, here's here's some more pictures actually. So there's like but, uh, the circuit board on the inside. The the serial port it, it makes perfect sense because I mean, at the time it, that was pretty much the best way to transfer uh, large amounts of data, such as whatever they're programming. Mm-hmm. And obviously it wasn't terribly portable. You see a power cord uh, uh, plugged in there uh, and all that kind of stuff. But, yeah, it was just – I mean, this is just kind of like a proof of concept at this point, right? Like we think we can do this. We think we can make the interface do this, and, and this is how we made it. And then that's for the software guys to deal with. And then they hand it over to the Johnny Eyes and everything, and they make this cool little mold that looks like a little, you know, what we see now. And they say, okay, can you fit, can you fit all of this right. into this? Not yeah, the, that's that's the hard not, part, not right? That's when you see yeah. what they want it to look like. Mm -hmm. They want it to fit in. And you go, holy crap! We, <laughs> we just did this proof of concept. You know, how the hell do we go from here to well, there? That's, that's how it works. I mean, you look at something like this. You look at these pictures. Let me bring up right here. Like you bring this. Uh, you look at this motherboard right here, right? With these giant connectors. There's a big. Looks like a memory interface. Like some kind of card interface there in the middle. Uh, giant chips and everything, right? These giant ports. And they're like, okay, this is where you go in, and you say, uh, okay. Can we, uh, the Samsung or one of our suppliers, or can we develop a chip that makes all four of those chips one chip, right? Right. Uh, you know, you make, you know, what can we do uh, to, to, to make it so we don't, well, if we get that down to one chip, maybe we don't need all the diodes down here and stuff like that. Like, that, that's, that's where the real, like, the real cool part of the engineering comes up with this, that we get something tiny like we have here, and now everybody's got stuff like this, right? So that's how you push the envelope. So it kind of, I, I always like seeing those kind of, like, Cool, you know. From a, from a designer and and you know a bit of a developer standpoint, though, there's those um, you know, the sleepless nights where you're just you know, you know, you want to get there. You have a vision of getting there, but I mean, the you don't know what the path is from A to B, and you're not. No one's done it yet, so you're not sure that it's possible. You're confident it's possible. You're being paid to make it possible, but you don't know how to do that yet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's that's a really uncomfortable and yet exciting place to be. Oh, yeah. And some people just thrive on that kind of thing, right? Yeah. I mean, that's what a lot of entrepreneurs are, are, are completely into, right? I think like, it's us crazy people thrive on that. People who wear <laughs> monkey uh, – well, no, sorry. It's not a monkey. It's a chimp on their heads. Mm. Monkeys are not chimps. Um, I got one more thing, and this could have been my awesome thing, only, but I think I would hold it until like I had one in hand and it was actually working and we saw it. Uh, but this is apparently coming out in May. I, I think I just found this like earlier today. Um, it's called Automatic. Um, basically what it is is, okay, computer, uh, computers have been on, on cars pretty standard since about two, I'm sorry, 1996, I believe. And the whole idea, like, I, I remember my dad would always, like, he tried working on cars, and he would get this unit that would, like, give the codes to say, okay, this is what's wrong with the emissions for you to figure out what's wrong with your car, because he had an old Thunderbird that was uh, uh, problematic, right? Um, so, basically what they do is, you for $70, you can pick up this kit that is basically this little doodad here, right? You plug this into this port that most cars have since 1996, most gas-run cars since 1996, right? You plug that in the port. That will now interface with an app on your phone, uh, which will uh, the most recent two iPhones, and they have about four models of Android that are compatible here, uh, stuff like the Galaxy and stuff like that. You have to look at the list on their site. Um, and what that will do is send information over about your mileage. If your service light comes on, you can tell it to turn it off. There's something right there that'll fail your inspection, right? Um, and even to the point where if you're, if uh, uh, you know, certain things that that hurt your mileage, like you know, hard stops or other you know bad tendencies, uh, it will actually chime at you and record those things. 
Doesn't Progressive have something like that? I'm, I'm pretty sure Progressive has something like that. I think I've heard like, of, like black boxes or something like that, right? Where like if you're in an accident, it'll like kind of like pick up all that information and say, okay, were you the one screwing it up? Um, but this whole idea is, you know, then you all ha ha you have all that information. You're getting what's going on with your gas mileage. Basically, all those features that you see on newer cars. Um, like like with the whole the OnStar like services and everything, you know, I just took a ride right. with somebody out to Philly that had the giant screen in the middle that interfaced with their phone and had the GPS and had all the all the you know stuff about their car all built in there, right? So basically, and the backup this, camera, rear view camera. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you had the rear view and everything, but but still, it's like you have all this information that is happening in a computer on your car, and now you've just. It is saying making dumb cards smarter is uh, the line that comes along with this. Mm. So this idea, right there, killing the check engine light would be worth its weight in gold, says Tom in the chat room. <laughs> um, and the other thing is, like, it, it, there's a GPS built into this thing, so it's plugged in. You go park your car, and you can pop up on your phone where your car is. I've heard others say that's worth its weight uh, as far as yeah. that goes. So, I, it's so obvious, though. You know, it's, it is. It's the obvious next step. It's like, hey, all this information's here. You, you know, instead of getting a unit like my dad had to get to try to interface this thing, that was like an obscene amount of money. Like I think it was a couple hundred bucks to get this thing. You already right. have a computer in your hand, you know, that can interface this kind of thing. You just need this little device to connect it, and you're good to go. Actually, here's the site here pulling up. It, it's stuff about keeping your engine he uh, healthy. Like I said, they, they plug the, you know, never forgetting where you parked. Uh, driving insistent to help you with. You know, stuff like mileage and everything. I think there was a thing where, yeah, if when you go and fill up your car, it takes note of that and then gives you all your information for miles per gallon and uh, uh, hours, miles. Uh, it gives you gives you like what, you know, based on information that it's pulling, you know, like kind of crowdsourcing off, off the Internet, how much you pay for gallon. Well. Many cars can already do that. So, yeah, it's just an issue of getting that onto your phone exactly. all in one device where you can make that information portable. So instead of saying, oh, I need to go get it. I want to go in my next car. I want to go get a car that gets this instead of this. I can I can not trade in my old Rendezvous, my old 2005, you know, SUV and, and just plug this guy in. And then and hopefully I get better mileage out of the thing because I'm going to start paying attention to the thing. The car is already taking note of. So, does it give you recommendations for how to get better mileage out of your existing vehicle? It does. It does. Like I said, it, it kind of like the fast braking and stuff, like some of those tendencies, it will let you know, hey, you're doing something that, that's screwing with your mileage, basically. Interesting. Okay. From, from the sounds of it. Uh, it, it they're taking pre orders now. Uh, I, I think I'm going to wait out for worse, first reviews, but I personally am very interested in checking this thing out. Uh, for, for 70 bucks, I think that's kind of worth it uh, for something like this to get. And there's even, I think they said there's like OnStar type. Of uh, I, I think I read somewhere they were talking about if you, oh yeah, automatic calls and help in a crash. Uh, if you are in an accident, you can set it up to notify nine one one or other numbers. Wow. Yeah. So and it's got the GPS information, right? So boom, they get all that information. Right. Uh, it's pretty cool. It, it, it's it it's it could be fun. Never forget where you park. No man. Yeah. It's not even like those apps where you check in, okay, this is where I parked, and you have to go find it. Hope you, hope it you automatically it. checks It's just you like, in. this is where your car is. Uh, we we, we got to do that in there transmitting. This is where your car is. So, yeah, that would be cool. cool. So, Awesome. Uh, anything else you guys want to touch on before we head out of here? Last call, guys, for geekiness. All right. John Carmen, you're at Carmen Avenue on Twitter where we can you people can talk to you. Yeah, they can talk that, to me. I'll are, talk back. I might curse. That's uh, right. Also, right. CarmenAvenue.com. Mm -hmm. And um, I think I might actually post my Dr. Fat story so that my title makes sense. Yeah, wait, I might do that. Can you give us a preview of, of what this is about? You want to see the video? Oh, you got a video? Oh, yeah. Google it. Google, go to YouTube, or just Google uh, John on Dr. Fat. John on Dr. It's, it's short. You can play it right now. Okay, okay, I don't think I might have audio. John on Dr. Fad, first thing that comes up. Let's see here. Now, I, I know the sync's going to be off. Is this it? Yeah, that's it. Hey, Inventor, who's got something here? Okay. 
Oh, my invention is called the automatic ammunition, mm -hmm. and it's for when you're playing out in the snow, and instead of packing snow together to make a snowball, which also it falls apart, you just scoop it up like this, and depending on if you're a lefty or a righty, it has extra room on your glove to throw the snowball. I see, so perfect six snow snowballs every time, and a lot harder too, right? <laughs> What's your name? John Carmen. Let's look for John and his snowball. <laughs> We've got something here, okay. John Carvin on Dr. Fat. I've never heard of this show. Yeah, most people haven't. I, in fact, I don't think I've ever run into someone who's heard of it. It was huge. Uh, when I was a kid, it was huge to me anyway. And I, my dad said that we would watch every episode. We'd watch uh, for any information on how to get on the show, and it never said anything. And then the, end, the producers ended up coming to my school. And it was like a school project where you pitched your idea and whatnot. I wasn't actually a contestant. It, there was a game show aspect of the show. Mm -hmm. um, but to be a contestant, you needed to either have a bigger invention, like something that had more movable parts or uh, a bigger personality. I mean, if you watch that clip closely, you could see how nervous I was just in that little, little, <laughs> you know, elevator pitch that I gave. And that so uh, I wasn't prepared to be a contestant, but... That was my big television breakthrough. And now look at you on the internet in front of camera whenever you feel like it, right? Yeah, in my I'm not even wearing pants. I mean, nope. that's how casual nope. I am. Nope. Hey, you would have not wore pants that day if nobody told you to, right? Well, um, yeah, I, my mom dressed me that day. So that's, and it's weird because, you know, uh, there's those snowball makers I've seen at like Five Below lately. So you were, you were ahead of your time there. <laughs> I saw them. I've, I saw them this year for the first time. Um and I, it was at like Five Below, like Marshalls, and I, I got a couple of them for friends of mine uh, who have triplets. So I found this two pack. So I had to get three two packs because they have three kids, and uh, and then one for the parents. I have no idea how well they work, but I bet they work better than my gloves. The gloves <laughs> never really worked that well. The, the snow had to be really you know moist and compactable in order for the gloves to work. Awesome, awesome, Joshi, What are you inventing over there? Uh, I'm inventing, uh, uh, um, uh, nothing. I got no, nothing. No, um, no. No, uh, Chachi says .NET is back up and running finally. Woo! Sorry. Um, uh, it was broken for a while. I don't know why. Um, you, you, neither do I, I honestly, I we didn't figure it out. We, we're not entirely sure why it went down. Hmm. Um, <laughs> but, uh, so I will be getting back to my 1001 games journey. Awesome. Um, nice. Soon. So if you want to go check out uh, his, his past journeys in that, uh, you can go to ChachiSays.net. Not .com. Yes. And if you want to buy .com, apparently it's going for about $2,000. Holy shit. That's Man, more than I did well with that. I know. How does that happen? What did we do with that site that somebody decided it was worth that much money, right? I don't know. I mean, I, when I was trying to get my, like, my MichaelSorg.com, they wanted like 90 bucks for it, right? And I still wouldn't pay that. Um I still waited them out, right? There's the secret. Man, I want to find out. out how much insert coins worth. <laughs> it's got to be doing better than Chachi says did, right? Oh, no, exactly. No? So I mean, let it go and find out, right? Be like, like, yeah. if you do, like, like, put the signpost here. We're like, this this thing is going for two thousand dollars. See if any bites on it. I can, <laughs> who the hell do they think like like Scott Bayo is going to buy the thing? I guess <laughs> and they got to be like. They got to be going for that. Um, I don't know. If Scott Bayo knows how to work a website. He can barely work oh. Twitter. Because I, I know He's, when they stack. Wait, no, he has a law blog. A law blog? <laughs> yeah, he does. Some people don't get that. Uh, I did. It's great. Bob, blah 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 blah. <laughs> Okay, okay. So uh, okay. Tom Bobbitt in the chat room said that he bets Chachi says dot net got some new carpet. <laughs> that could be. That could be some uh, some some nine months ago. Um, yeah. <laughs> but that's okay. You were busy with insert coin. You're busy with Chachi plays, and now now that is out of the way, and you yes. can concentrate on this blog, right? Yes. And right. and hopefully back on insert coin. Right. So go check that out, guys. The, the video show's not back, but the adventure is back uh, as well. Chachi's doing enough video. Let's be the honest. The video's not coming back. No, the video's not coming back. You're doing enough video right now. Yeah, no, yeah. the video will not be back. Exactly. Uh, and, uh, of course, I'm over at MikeSorg.com. I've been, uh, I'll have some other, I have some cool blog ideas coming up, but in the meantime, it's just kind of been reposting your stuff from the newsletter that's over at Sorgatron.com uh, and all the rest of the stuff at SorgatronMedia.com, including Wrestle, Wrestling Mayhem Show. Uh, Unsung came up today where uh, we, we, we talked about some cool tech going, going on in uh, over at UPMC with thyroid cancer. Um, 
And uh, and of course, uh, let's let's play uh, with the insert coin to begin. Um, dot com. So go check that out. And if you're here, you can check us out here at live starting at seven p.m. for this show at uh, live. and stick around for let's play and wrestling mayhem show. It's a night of podcasting fun. And you guys can join us. Uh, again, catch us at awesomecast.com. Contact at awesomecast.com. Tweet us at awesomecast. And we're on Facebook and Google Plus, so you can converse with us. We post the stories throughout the week. Enjoy us in the chat room, like I said, and uh, all that stuff. So thank you to our awesome chat room that has been hopping all night, giving us stories, giving us awesome things of the week. Keep that up, guys. You've been our awesome audience. John's been our awesome guest. Thank you. And Have you're an welcome. Have an awesome week. <laughs> so we're getting-